name of Jesus that we stand in your presence this morning and we just want to say thank you. Lord, we bless your name because you're worthy of all our praise. Besides thee, there is no other God. Lord, we thank you because you are the almighty God, the all-knowing God, the all-wise God, the all-powerful God, the all-being God. Lord, we bless your name because you're worthy God. And we just want to say thank you. Lord, we thank you because you woke us up this morning, Lord. Clothed in our right mind with the wisdom portion of heaven's strength, with the mind of that thank you, Jesus. With the mind of that hallelujah.
uh, viewers to keep the blessing flowing, amen. That you can bless the house of God, amen, through your tithe and offering. If you can look on our Facebook page or our YouTube page and give, we will be more than happy to have the Lord bless you as he blesses us, amen. Amen. I said the sound to you can't be God given. And if you want to try him, try him and see that the more you give to him, the more he'll give to you. But most of all, even in your giving, what we want is to be soul winners. Amen. Amen. We're, we're an end time ministry. And if you look at the news, you know we living in the last days. I said, we living in the last days. So you, your responsibility is get your soul right. Amen. Oh, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. This is the part of the service that we've been waiting for. Amen. It gives me great joy, amen, to present the gift that the Lord has given us. Here at the Adam Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Meridian, Georgia, where everybody is somebody. Amen. And even though we can't all be in the sanctuary, we thank God for technology that you can share what we've been getting all the days of our lives. Amen. And I'm not talking about the soap opera. Amen. Because we're definitely not young and restless. Amen. But we are born and new. Amen. Amen.
his son Jesus who is our Savior and Redeemer and our keeper and God, the precious Holy Ghost. We want to acknowledge Reverend Sam's our facilitator to all of the ministers of the gospel and to their companions, to our lay leaders, to the praise team and musicians, to the ushers, to our media and sound tech. We thank God for all of you. And last but certainly not least, to my companion, First Lady Thomas. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Well, brothers and sisters, as we continue on this Christian journey and teaching expedition, we're going to remain in the theme that we have, and that is a spiritual mind renewal. Now, the text that God has led us through to by the Holy Ghost is the book of Exodus. And I see now while God chose the book of Exodus because when we look at it, it is parallel with us, you and I, on our Christian journey. You know, a lot of us think that once we give our hand to the preacher and we supposedly give God our heart, that everything is going to be hunky-dory. Hallelujah. But, but I want to share with you that upon your giving your life to Jesus Christ and accepting him, as Lord and Savior, regardless of whatever you might go through, God will see you through it. That's part of the benefit of being a Christian believer. God is a keeper of his word. The only thing that can hinder God from doing what he needs to do for you is you yourself. When you allow doubt to come in and when you desire and allow hesitancy to walk in your life and you don't move when God says move. A lot of times we miss the blessing that God has for us. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God showed me that the mind set of his people have been all but destroyed. Help me somebody. That's why he led me to the scripture in Philippians 2 and 5. And that is our theme scripture where he says, let this mind, the mind of our Savior, Pastor, how do I get his mind? By studying his word, by communing with him, by praying to him in season and out of season, by talking with him, amen, to the cool of the day and then even in the midnight. Talking to him and expecting him to speak back. The more you deal with Jesus, the more you become like him. It is hard to deal with Jesus Christ and his word and remain the same. Come on and talk to me now. He, he said in our theme scripture, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Now, how do I get the mind now? Because I've been through hell and high water. There have been some times when I almost felt like giving up. Help 
many of you know what I'm talking about? There have been some times when I wondered where is his power? Am I right about it? I know all of us have. There have been some times when I said, God, I'm waiting on you. You told me to wait patiently on you. And I'm waiting, but I'm not just sitting here waiting. While I'm waiting, I'm praying and I'm preaching and I'm tithing, tithing and I'm sowing and I'm, I'm serving mankind. What else can I do, God? And the Holy Spirit speaks up and says, stay steadfast, unmovable. Abide in my word because when you abide in my word, my word abides in you and my word will take precedence away everything that you ever do. And he turned me here and he said, now this is the time and the season, amen, for every Christian believer to take inventory of your Christian walk. With God. Oh, yes. We're quickly advancing to the third quarter of the month, the ninth month. And as we look back over those eight months, amen, we have been pressed on every hand. Even though your finances might still be okay and your health might yet be okay, amen, your mind has been through war. Many of us are in warfare right now because the pandemic is worse than it was when it first started. There's death on every hand. There's sickness on every hand. Y'all ain't talking to me. That there's fear that is ravaging the community because you're looking around and people who used to be there aren't there anymore. And it has an effect on you whether you believe it or not. One day you can go to the restaurant and the next day is shut down. One day you can go to school and the next day the school is shut down. One day you can come to church and the next day you can't. What is the world coming to? Can I tell you? We are living, my brothers and sisters, in the end time. The church age is quickly coming to an end. God told me to tell you, prepare my people because I am coming. And because you don't know it, and because you don't see it, doesn't make it not happen. It is the word of God. It is the truth of God. He said in the last day, everything that is happening, wars and rumors of war, mothers and fathers turning against sisters and brothers turning against one another, there'd be hatred, there'd be violence, do be talking to me, there'd be everything that is transpiring. He says, well, I want you to teach Amen. From Exodus, amen, the 16th chapter, beginning at verse number one, you remember we were talking about God's people on last week. They had walked into a land and found bitter water. Can I tell you something, uh, Sister Khadija? Amen. You're going to experience some difficult times on your way to success. You're going to hit some morals in your life. Well, you're going to almost cry. You're going to almost give up. But one thing that I found out, Brother Anthony, the more that I'm pressed, when I come through, I'm stronger. I'm smarter. I'm better. I'm more anointed. I'm more... Oh, y'all don't hear me here. We're through. The water was bitter. Life can be bitter sometimes, Brother Davis. And you wonder why in the world is it like this? The people, the Israelites, began to complain. Only been thirsty three days and they were whining. God 
delivered there. What I want you to see in this text today is the loving hand that God has on you. How much God loves you. No matter what you're going through. No matter what you're having to endure now. If you're a born again believer, washed in the blood of the Lamb, God's going to see you through. God brought them to Elam after the funeral fell. And God showed them blessings on every hand. Am I right? Sometimes up, sometimes down, Brother Raymond. But if you keep your hand in the master's hand, can't hold your hand now. But if you keep your hand in the master's hand, tell your neighbor, I'm locked up with it. See, the enemy is pulling on us now because he's trying to grab the, the reins of our mind. Look at the minds of these people here. They have been in bondage 400 years. Their mind and mentality is of the slave mentality. Just like us. We've been through some devastating time. Our mentality is changing. A lot of us just ain't born as we used to be. Just not as out front as we used to be. Fear no evil. Walk through the valleys of the shadow of death. We, a lot of us now, we're not as strong as we used to be. God picks it where they encamp the round. How many of you know you can't stay in the blessed place all the time? When God says it's time to move, it's time to move. Even though they were blessed with well, 12 wells and 70 palm trees, shade all over the place in the wilderness, I come to tell you, God can bless you even in your wilderness, even going through the pandemic, God can bless you. I wish I had me somebody know what I'm talking about. Is God blessing anybody here? Is God blessing anybody in Cyberland? God had went to sleep. God had died. God is still in the blessing business. God is still in the miracle work. He said, awake up. Why you think I'm blowing this so far? He said, awake up. Huh? Arise! Get up! Shake yourself! And let's get to work. Hallelujah. Now, now I, I want you to see that they've been in a bitter experience and they've been in a sweet experience. They want to camp out in the sweet experience, but they want to get up out of the bitter experience. Isn't that like us? Huh? When, when we're going through difficult times, help me, Holy Ghost, we want to get out of there as soon as possible. But don't you know why you're going through some difficulties? God is working on you. God is redoing your mind. God is redoing your spirit. Because you know if you hold on. Set up God. See, the devil's aim is to make you give up. Okay, God said, so let's get them up, Moses. Can you imagine Pastor Moses and co-pastor Aaron? Let's look at the first verse, amen, in the 16th chapter of Exodus. I'm trying to make good use of the time here. Amen. Now I want you to see it's been two and a half months. We done got out of Egypt. God has given us all the money we need. How many of you in here got all the money you need? How many of you in Cyberland got all the money you need? God gave them enough money to hold them for 40 years. It wasn't no belts out there. Wasn't no dollar generals out there. Wasn't no dollar stores out there. Y'all ain't talking to me. Wasn't no shoe stores selling red bottoms out there. But God still took care of them. Their clothes wouldn't age. Help me, Holy Ghost. Their shoes wouldn't wear out. Right. They wouldn't even die, but they had to die because of their disobedience. Tell your neighbor, God with you. God is with you. He's trying to change your mind. Can you see the difficulty of, of this?
this job, amen, that Moses had, number one, he's dealing with people with a slave mentality. Don't you know it's hard to deal with people who don't never think they're going to make nothing? Who will never think they good enough for anything? Huh? Don't you know it's difficult dealing with people who don't want to go nowhere, don't want to do nothing, think they can camp out, help me holy go by Elam and stay there. They're going to walk in two and a half months. Are y'all traveling with me? Think about it now. You've been used to having everything you want. But all of a sudden, Dick and Bubba, you're in the wilderness. You got what you prayed for. How many of you know to get to receive what you've been praying for going to cost you something? Old man told me a long time ago, be careful what you ask God for. Because you don't realize what goes along. A lot of people talk about the Jewish nation, but they don't realize what it's cost them to be God's chosen. To be the apple of God's eye. Don't you know there's a price of the Ashley? You gotta pay for God.
because see with murmuring becomes demon spirits. It attracts what you bring with it. I'm teaching better y'all right there. When you got people always murmuring and complaining, it brings a bad spirit. I'm teaching you that. Huh? Tell a complainer, shut your mouth. Huh? Tell them that if you got a wife or a husband always complaining, if you're unhappy, get up and get out. Same way in the church, if you're unhappy, go somewhere. That's a bad spirit. And you take it even in your home. You don't know that demon is running over things. God sent me here today. Look what it says here now. And the children of Israel said unto them, look at here now, look at their conversation. Help me, help me, Holy Ghost. And the children of Israel said unto them, Aaron and Moses. Look at him, Maya. These are hand-picked men of God. They didn't volunteer. How many called preachers in here volunteered? Huh? If you did, you better go back. Help me, Holy Ghost. Because if God ain't calling you, don't you call God called. Moses complained. God gave him out. Huh? Why? Because he said, I don't speak plain. He gave him out. And don't you know, with all this authority, pastoring over five million people, they're complaining. Hmm. Remember, they got what they asked for. They pray, they say, give us freedom, we want to get up out of here. God sent the man to men to help lead them out of bondage when they got to the place where they, they didn't realize with freedom come some trials. I'm going somewhere. Huh? With freedom comes trials. I got 10 minutes left. 10 minutes. And the children of Israel said unto them, What the God? I, I wish God. Oh, look at him what they say. What the God? We had died by the hand. I wish God would have killed us over there in Egypt. Be careful what you ask for. Look at say here now. When, when, when we sat by the flesh pot. You remember how y'all have all them old crab pots with neck bones and chicken necks? Help me, Holy Ghost, and smoke this and smoke that. And the, the, the flesh pots in Egypt were full. Why? Because they were in a nation that they depended on the government to take care of them. I come to tell you, watch out in America. You waiting on all these free checks and all this free food. They setting you up for something bigger than what you could ever imagine. I'm preaching. God told me to come with a prophetic word to warn his people. Watch out for the one world order because it is subliminally coming into your life right now. As a matter of fact, it's already here. Can we go back and have church like we used to? I wish to God we could, but I doubt it seems now. Take some time. But I thank God for you overnight and you Facebook overnight because you have helped the Lord of the Lord go out in the highways and the hedges and in the byways and tell a dying world that the wages of sin. Huh? Hey, you know, you got a star in your crown. Help me, Jesus. And we were shaped by the fire. Man, we were having a good time. I listen at the boy. They talk about, Doc, you remember when we used to be under the tree? Help me, Holy Ghost. Somebody buy a thing of wine and somebody buy a case of beer and roll up a couple of splits and we would just have a good time. I say, you can't do it now like that. 
Come on here. Why? Because the days have passed and gone. And the evening saves our appearance. We ain't bread till we got food. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness. Most of you have brought us out here. What you trying to do? Kill all of us? That's what Dick Brown said. What you trying to do? Kill all of us out here? You brought us in this weary land. You brought us in a place of none production. You brought us in a wilderness and you got us out here and you telling us the Lord going to make a way. Closing that. Tell your neighbor why the preacher telling you that is because, Sister Connie, you walk by faith and not by sight. You don't go by what it looks like, you go by what God said it is. Can I tell you something, church? You will never be able to see the complete vision like the man of God or the woman of God that's in charge of the ministry. Don't see it. You might say, I can even run it. But if you're anointed, it can own you to run it. You'll run yourself in the hell and you'll run the church in the hell. It might look easy, but it ain't easy. They tell him, oh, you got all of you were trying to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Closing that door, softly. Help me, Jesus. God said these people out here, they cried and they hungry. They done ran out of the sandwiches. They had made Two months ago, all the jerky, helping the Holy Ghost, and disappeared now. No more bread, super silver. We drunk all the water we could at Elam. And now you're telling us that we got to go on. And in this fourth verse, it states, then said, the Lord unto Moses. Listen, who talking? He said, Moses, I heard you cry. Behold, I will rain. Tell your neighbor, it's going to rain. God is going to rain in Ellen Grove Baptist Church. God is going to rain in your household, Brother DJ. Since you've been talking to Jesus, he's changed his mind about a whole lot of things. Reverend Sam's a amen when you cry on him in the midnight hour. God will bring you just what you need. He told Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven. That's why I heard the hymn all that just said, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. <laughs> Look what God said to Moses. <laughs> he said, I want the people to go out and gather a certain amount. How many of you see that God is providing for his people? God has always provided for you and for you. It may not have been everything that you wanted. Might not have been the house that you desire. May not be the automobile that you wanted. But God will provide. He told them, I want you to go out and get up a certain amount every day. Gather it according to your household. Don't go out there being a glutton and a hog. I got 
a certain amount I want you to receive. How many of you know that God has an amount for you? And I can honestly say, many of us have not reached our potential. We ain't living nothing like what God want to do for you. God is able. God told them if you depend on the amount, I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove to you that I am the living God. I want to know how many of you have asked God, prove it to me. I need to know unequivocally that you are the God of my salvation. God, I've been doing everything I'm big enough to do just for you. But I ain't seen no results. I've been waiting, holding on to your unchanging hand. But God said it's going to come to pass on the sixth day. You ain't going to even have to go out and gather nothing. Don't you know? And can't you see that God wants you to depend on it. He said if you do your part, I'll do my part. I'll open up the windows of heaven and I'll pull you out. Blessings you don't have room enough to receive. I come to tell you, Sister Olivia, the windows are open. All you gotta do is call on it. Call on it in the midnight of your life. And I heard the Lord say, don't worry about it. In the morning, I'm gonna give you bread to the fool. Late in the evening, I'm gonna air back you some quail in here. How many of you know if you ask him, he will put your neighbor, kill your neighbor. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I asked him a long time ago, Father, give me a wife that's going to love me for who I am. God, let me went through a few fans, but God, on a Sunday evening, had somebody waiting, standing strategically, got a trap. Uh, sent for me. Uh, I'm glad uh, I got uh, what I asked for. Uh, how many of you uh, don't ask the Lord? Uh, Lord, uh, prove yourself. Uh, God, uh, prove himself. Uh, he proved it uh, with Noah. Uh, didn't he do it? Uh, Burn him out uh, in the rain. Uh, 40 days. Uh, and 40 nights, huh, won't he do it? Huh, won't him do it? Huh, I know he will. Huh, won't he do it? Huh, and Brother Peter, huh, out there huh, in the middle huh, of the lake, huh, walking huh, on the water, huh, it was gone. Huh, said, come on. Huh, he let him walk huh, on the water. Huh, while I'm preaching, huh, tell your neighbor, huh, I'm renewing uh, my mind. Uh, I'm coming out uh, of the slave mentality. I'm God. Uh, I'm chosen. Uh, I'm highly blessed. Uh, I'm anointed. Uh, I'm the head uh, and not the tail. Uh, I'm above uh, and not beneath. Uh, I belong uh, to the Lord. Uh, he gonna believe me uh, all the way uh, from earth. Good. The Lord is good. And he 
He's worthy to be praised. Change your mind. Stop letting people infiltrate the battlefield. When you let an enemy in, he'll conquer. But when you let God in, he opens, he refreshes, he makes you better. How many of you want to be better? This is the witness. They're going to give you an opportunity to come to Jesus just as you are. Hallelujah. He's able to save you from the guttermost to the othermost. God is good. And he's worthy. But he wants us to get our minds prepared for what the future is going to hold. Some of us are building our hopes on second stand. Turn it around and build it on Jesus and his word. I guarantee you, he'll keep you. Come by that Christian experience. Kind of be for baptism or restoration. But you can come just as you are. Are you here? You need a church home. Are you here? Come. God been good to you. I want you to activate your prayer life even the more now. Jalen, I want you praying for a minute. Lay, lay, lay your hands on But you're the newest Christian. Give your hands and just tell God thank you. Let him walk you through this time. God gonna walk you through it. Think about it. God gonna walk you through it. Brother Van, it ain't over. God got you. How you hot and deeper depths. God bless you. God bless you the more. Hallelujah. You might be deacon material. Are you here? Come. Come. Come by letter. Christian experience. Can I make for baptism or restoration? Are you here? Father, we thank you. We thank you for the psalm ministry. We thank you for the prayers. We thank you for everything that has transpired. Now, God, through this season, let us come at one with you. Same mind, same God. God bless your people. Bless everyone here. That's under the sound of my voice. And even the absent part of my church family that could not be here. We thank you for them. Bless them. Bless the bereaved. And Father, this COVID that has been running rampant, this Delta strain. God put a muscle on it in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood. Touch the hearts of our family members. Our church family. Touch them one by one and name by name. Show them you're a miracle worker. God, I know we talk about the death, but what about the miracles of life that you're working right now? Touch everyone that's under the sound of my voice in here. God, there are some you heal and deliver. They forgot all about you. But I come today to lift them all up before you. Bless now in Jesus' name. Bless this church community. Blood comes, put us in a blood bowl, protecting us from this enemy. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Let us now prepare our hearts for Holy Communion. Deacons, Elder Sam's, if you would, lead us in the covenant. You may be seated, church family.
And I just want to say this to you all. I appreciate everything that you are doing in this ministry. I thank you for your dedication and your sacrifices. We won't be holding worship service here at the sanctuary on uh, next Sunday. We will be watching the statistics and, and watching what is going on in the community. Never think we're not paying attention because ours, your safety is our primary objective. We want you all to be safe and feel safe. We thank God for everything. I want to take this time to thank our media ministry for the outstanding work that he's done and he's been doing. All through this pandemic, help me, Holy Ghost. And we're going to move with the times. Brother Sam, if you would, Brother Sam, going to lead us through the covenant. Thank you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for the word of God. Amen. We're changing our minds. Amen. I will be reading the minister and the congregation. We expect you to be reading with us. Amen. And we're going to read the last together. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body of Christ. We say, Yes. 
two ordinances with the church. One was upon hearing and receiving the word of God and accepting it that they fall to be betrayed into the hand of sin. No guile in his mouth. He was the perfect Lamb of God that laid down his life sacrificially for you and I. Every sin that you might have or ever have committed upon you accepting and receiving Jesus Christ as Lord, your sin debt has been paid in full. That's why we come to services to be re-inspired, to be strengthened through the word of God, to live a Christian life. That's the key to it all, is living the Christian life. And we must be armed with the word of God because the word of God is what is what will keep us through all the trials. And you're going to have some. You're going to have some virus in your life. You're going to have some ills in your life. But through it all, don't get caught up or complacent with either. Keep walking by faith and not by sight. And one of these days, you're going to wake up and see Jesus face to face for eternity. But yet, while the blood is running warm, give God all you have to give him and give it to him right now. The fruit of the vine, which is symbolic of the blood of the Lamb of God. Symbolic of that blood that they put during the Passover. Amen. So that when the death angel saw it, he would pass over. That same blood symbolically is what you have applied to the doorposts and the livers of your heart. So when the devil sees you, he sees the blood of Jesus and he got to pass you by. You got to know what you got. See, a lot of us don't know what we possess. And the enemy runs rapid. So you got to stand up in these last and evil days and tell the devil, hell no, I'm not going for it. I ain't putting up with it. Sometimes you got to get violent and take it back by faith. Let me hold it up. Let that devil get out of your house. Take that sickness down the road. Take that poverty and that down to have out of here. Come on now. The blood. The pure blood of the Lamb of God. So perfect and pure that when, amen, the blood drops fell from Jesus and hit the earth. The earth went into a cataclysmic attack. The sun stopped shining. The moon dripped in the, the stars fell out of the sky. The graveyards opened up. Tell me my power. Tell me my power. Ah, you don't know who you believe in. The same God. And do even greater. Don't be talking to this. Stop sitting down with your mouth closed.
right there don't make it. Has anyone online there if they don't make it? If not, officers, you may return. Just think, they were putting his 
tears out from the Anthony's son's room. They were slapping his face until it swole. Twice the size of a normal man. They spat on him because by the way it was not lawful. It fit within 50 cases of a man. They spat on the son of the living God. Jesus, and he wouldn't know. When they hung him high and stretched him wide, and his blood dripped down, the last words he said was, Eloi, Eloi, my God, my God, because God stepped behind the curtain of life to allow him to fulfill the mission which he had come. That was to lay down his life for you and for me, that we might have everlasting life. Come, as often as you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering till I come again. But without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. But as often as you do it, do it in my name. Frank and you, all of them. Y'all tell them bye. See you later. God bless you. Have a great evening.